Engineers at Fukushima Daiichi have an ambitious plan to create an ice wall under the site, but it's not going the way they wanted to. Their tests show they haven't been able to freeze the water. In April, the operators of the plant Tokyo Electric Power Company began pouring chemical solutions in tunnels at the number two reactor. They hope to freeze the water to stop it flowing out to the ocean. But tests show the water remains above freezing temperatures. Officials believe the coolant isn't spreading evenly. They say something is blocking the flow. They're now considering adding more pipes under the nuclear plant. And they say the frozen barrier may not be completed by the end of the month as scheduled. TEPCO officials are also trying to stop groundwater from flowing into the nuclear facility and mixing with contaminated materials. Engineers have been trying to freeze the ground to create an underground barrier around all four damaged reactors. The Japanese government wants to build intermediate facilities in Fukushima Prefecture for storing radioactive soil and waste. Officials have briefed residents in the areas where the facilities will be, but people are still concerned. Government officials held 16 meetings with former residents and landowners in the two towns near the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. They said they plan to purchase 16 square kilometers of land for the storage buildings. They said they will move the stored waste out of Fukushima Prefecture 30 years later. But residents said they worry that a site for final disposal still hasn't been chosen. Some of them asked how much the government is willing to pay for the land. The government wants to bring in the contaminated soil and waste by next January, but it has to have a plan that residents and local governments can accept. Hideko had gotten permission to visit her home. While there, she saw how the town had changed. In front of my eyes, there were many tanks holding contaminated water. I could see reactors 5 and 6 behind them. I realized just what kind of place we'd been living in. I can't go back again. Not even if I wanted to. This is Futaba town as Hideko saw it. Tank after tank for storing radioactive water had been set up near her home. In May 2013, the Japanese government designated most of Futaba a so-called return difficult zone and told residents that it would be hard for them to go home for a long time. Zero point forty nine microsievert power. Nine point seven microsievert power. Nine point seven microsievert power. Zero point five zero microsievert power. 0.51 マイクロシーベルトパーアワーです。0.49 マイクロシーベルトパーアワー。0.52 マイクロシーベルトパーアワー。0.52 マイクロシーベルトパーアワーです。9.65 マイクロシーベルトパワー 
0.59 マイクロシーベルトパワーです。The monitoring is completed. 9.04 microsievert power. The Japanese government is looking at ways to keep the economy on track for steady growth. It has drawn up a draft of a new economic growth strategy. The measures reflect calls for business leaders, such as corporate tax cuts. The government presented the draft at a meeting of a panel on industrial competitiveness. This is the second time for Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's administration to prepare such a strategy following one last year. Abenomics has brought about a virtuous cycle in our economy. We need to proceed with the plans in the draft to achieve a sustained growth trajectory. The new strategy includes a plan to reduce the corporate tax rate to below 30 percent from the current 35 percent within several years, beginning in the next fiscal year. The government will also review as soon as possible the investment portfolio of a public pension fund to put more money into stocks. The fund is the biggest of its kind in the world, managing more than $1.1 trillion. The draft also calls for legislation to set up a new labor system. It would include the introduction of performance-based salaries for employees with special professional skills. The government plans to discuss the draft with the ruling coalition and submit it for approval at a cabinet meeting on June 27th. Now, Japanese government officials say robots will play a key role in Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's new growth strategy. They say the technology will help make businesses more productive and profitable. The officials see robotics taking off in the next five years. They say the market in the manufacturing sector will double to about $12 billion, kick-starting a new industrial revolution. And they say increased use of robots in healthcare will expand the market in the services sector to 20 times what it is now. That would make it worth about $12 billion. The officials will include promoting robotics in the draft of the government's new growth strategy. They'll present the draft to a government panel on Monday. Cabinet ministers will likely approve it later this month. Many diners in Japan count eel among their favorite food, but they're being warned by experts to conserve the fish. The International Union for Conservation of Nature has classified the Japanese eel as an endangered species. NHK World's Takafumi Terui reports. It's been a long Japanese tradition to eat unagi or eel. Poems written in the 8th century state that eel was good for stamina. Many people consider eel cuisine as one of the premium dishes for the summer. So the news that Japanese eels are on the red list is causing concern with diners across Japan. It's so delicious. I would be shocked if eels are banned. For us Japanese, eels are a familiar food on our tables. I am very surprised to hear the species is in such danger. Biologist Kenzo Kaifu is a member of the expert group that contributed to the International Union for Conservation of Nature's decision to add Japanese eel to the list. The decision to enlisting Japanese eels as endangered species seems reasonable to me. In my opinion, they should have been on the red list perhaps 10 years ago or even before. Fishermen are catching fewer eels every year. 
four decades ago, they hauled in over 3,000 tons annually. Now the number has gone down to less than one tenth of that amount. Kaifu has been chasing the migrant fish for years. Adult eels are caught in rivers and lakes, but nobody ever really knew where they were born until recently. In 2009, researchers discovered spawns of Japanese eel here in an area around the West Mariana Ridge in the Pacific Ocean. Baby eels are carried westwards by ocean currents to waters around Taiwan, China, the Korean Peninsula, and Japan. Kaifu says one main reason for the rapid eel population decline could be global warming. He points out river banks covered in concrete may be another factor. And he suspects overfishing is also to blame. Eel is a highly profitable fish. They are caught young and sold to farms in East Asian countries. Japanese eels are caught not just in Japan, but China, South Korea, and Taiwan. In these countries, eel farming and fishing started growing dramatically since 1970s. The Red List does not automatically regulate or ban fishing. But Kaifu believes that now is the time for nations in the region to cooperate on conservation and sustainable use of the endangered fish. Kaifu says the decline of the eel population may cause conflicts among various stakeholders from fishermen to consumers. Conflicts may occur not only within one country, but also among the country of East Asia in order to solve conflicts among stakeholders. Adequate and efficient information sharing is needed. The international mechanism is there, uh, but not enough. Next month, an information sharing workshop will be held for the stakeholders in Japan. Kaifu hopes that it will be the first step towards conserving a fish that's been on Japanese tables for centuries. Takahumi Teruri, NHK World, Tokyo. Very good. At this time of year, shoals of skipjack tuna, or katsuo in Japanese, swim close to the Pacific coast of Japan. One of the most popular ways of eating it is called tataki. The outer surface is filled is lightly grilled, leaving the inner flesh raw. Many people look forward to the arrival of skipjack season, but fishermen say catches this year are smaller than usual. We have a report about why that's happening. Menu. Since the old days, people in Japan have considered arrival of the skipjack season as a sign that early summer has arrived. But things are looking a little different this year. An HK reporter visited a restaurant in Tokyo's Ginza district, operated by Kochi Prefecture, which is known for its large catches of skipjack. The most popular item on the menu is tataki, a dish featuring slices of skipjack lightly grilled on the outside. Fisher from Kochi Prefecture restaurant says skipjack prices are now about 20% higher than usual. She says it might make sense to serve it in slightly thinner slices here, but then it would not look and taste as good as real katsunoto tataki should. Saga port in Kuroshio town is one of Kochi's major bases for skipjack fishing. Usually the 90 or so fishing boats based here are out at sea at this time of year, but today most of them are anchored in port. From March to May, skipjacks swim north following the Kuroshio current as it runs along the coast of Japan. NHK has contacted seven major fishing ports in Koshi and found that their combined catches in March came to about 10.6 tons. That's about one seventh of what it was last year. A fisheries cooperative official says that normally this time of the year the ports here would be crowded with skipjack fishing boats waiting to unload. He says he hopes catches return to normal later this month and in May. So NHK spoke with popular fish expert Sakana-kun. <laughs> Sakana-kun. 
Uh, that's why this is catch of the spring jack, spring skipjack are so poor. He says it might be due to the drop in the temperature of the sea near Japan. The poor skipjack catches starting to have a serious impact on the incomes of many fishermen. Makio Okuda lives in Kuroshio town. He's been fishing for skipjack for 30 years. But he caught a completely different kind of fish on this day. Okuda says he had a catch of sea brim. He says normally he'd be mostly catching skipjack now, but this year they just aren't around. He says his income this month will drop to a less than a quarter of what he made in April last year. He says usually he'd be making most of his income around this time of the year. Okuda says he's worried about what could happen if skipjack catches do not rebound next month. He says he'll find it hard to support his family. Officials at an experimental fishery station in the prefecture say this is because there's been a drop in skipjack populations near the Japanese coast. They also say the temperature of the seawater is cooler than usual. This may have delayed the northward seasonal migration of the fish. Sakonakun also points to these factors. This chart shows seawater temperatures along Japan's coast. The water off the coast of Shikoku, blue in colour, indicating the seawater is cooler than usual. The temperature at this time of the year one degree colder. Why is the ocean to the south of Japan cooler than usual? NHK weather person Inoki Ida says there are two reasons for the phenomenon typhoons and cold air from the north. She says that first Japan was hit by a series of typhoons last autumn which churned up the seawater bringing cooler water from deep down up to the surface. Says that led to a gradual drop in the temperature of the ocean's surface last autumn. She says another factor is Japan has been covered by cold air masses during this past winter, and this also helped to cool down the seawater. So the difference is a matter of only one degree. What impact does such a slight fluctuation in the water temperature have on fish? Sakonakun says that for fish, a drop of one degree in water temperature is equivalent to 10 degrees for humans. He says such unusually cool seawater from the point of view of the fish can delay their northward migration along the Japanese coast. Sakonakun has another concern. He says he fears excessive fishing may also have contributed to the poor catches this season. He points out people in Japan enjoy eating skipjack twice in a year, in spring and again in autumn. He says fishing operations that operate year-round have led to overfishing and led to a reduction in fish stocks. He says people need to work harder to preserve the stocks. People walking into Japanese businesses are seeing more and more signs of something missing in the economy. The signs read, help wanted. Managers can't find enough workers to fill open positions. So many of them are turning to foreign students to do the job. HK World's Kumiko Seko tells us more. International students read aloud the company motto at the morning meeting in Chinese. Seventy percent of the workers at this chain restaurant.
come from abroad, most of them students from China. They make about $10 an hour, the same as their Japanese colleagues. More than 100,000 international students have taken part-time jobs. That's up 50% over the past five years. Some managers have changed their training programs to attract new employees. Din Wenjin started here as a part-timer. Now she works full-time and leads training. Here you go. You made a noise. Please do it more slowly. If you serve like that, you might spill some stew. Japanese law prohibits international students from working more than 28 hours a week. Some managers keep track of everyone's schedule so employees don't go over the limit. We'll listen to what the foreign workers have to say and create a better work environment for them. One language school has taken on a new role. About 1,200 students from 40 countries are studying at this school. And the people who run it have launched a job placement company to attract even more. School officials want to support applicants who want to study and earn their living at the same time. The company received more than 500 calls from managers looking to hire at restaurants, hotels and distribution firms. Our challenge is to figure out how we can find good matches between the students and businesses looking to fill openings. And the horns keep on ringing. Managers looking for the right people to get the job done. Kumiko Seko, NHK World, Tokyo. It's been considered Japan's national drink, but these days it's catching on around the world. And New Yorkers recently got a chance to say kampai and learn more about this traditional beverage. Drink sake for health. The Japan Society hosted the promotional event. It aims to increase sake consumption in the United States. Participants got to sample more than 30 kinds of sake from 11 brewers across Japan. For some, it was the chance to revisit old favorites and make some fresh discoveries. We love Japanese food, uh, but unfortunately we don't know exactly you know, how to choose the proper sake. So for us it's a great opportunity to come here. Officials at the Japanese trade organization say sake exports to the United States have doubled over the past decade. I come here every year. I feel people's knowledge of sake has been growing year by year. The more you know, the more you want to know about sake.